And let's look at a free body diagram, but, you know, in, in real life, how the forces um, resolve and how you get to see how it would look. Apparently, this is a girder with a bunch of stirrups in it, spaced, I don't know, four inches apart. Uh, it would be nice if to critique it if they would have shown where the load was being put, but we'll figure it out, I think. Let's look at the structure and applying the load to it. Let's slow this down. And I'll take the volume down. Okay, so check that out. So free body diagram could not, you know, computer simulation couldn't even show this is where this one would, would pop and that pop. It's just not that accurate. You've got to do what they're doing here. Uh, you know, this is, looks like the alignment of the stirrups. You can see that's a stirrup of, uh, experiencing a buckling moment, popping out, spalling out concrete, and here in the middle of all places there. But don't get confused that these two are related that way. It's its own path. And the path would look something like that. This being probably equally... Uh, loaded and transferring loads as the compress as the failure happens, it's transferring loads also, but it explodes it exposes itself like an X-ray. Here we go, and and we're getting this beautiful X-ray, and this is just some spalling, some pressures in there, pushing it outwards, and beautifully so again, beautiful, and you can see the forces are all the way up top here. This could be a, a reversal of uh, the forces coming up causing a compressive moment up here and it's, and it's rebounding down. And there we go. We have a flex. Did you see it bounce as the loads were on it? It popped free and this isn't this is still going to be held together by the stirrups and the uh, transverse main bars. Beautiful. And there's your 45. So it's coming back that direction. Obviously the load's not from below it. And Awesome. So let's zoom in on here. Look at your lines. Follow the lines back. They all follow back to where the source came, where the source is. So if you're just looking at this, you say, wow, look at those cracks. And then look at this rebar here. Is uh, this thing what? You know, is it a bit of buckle? What's going on here? If these lines are behind your uh your uh your stirrups, you follow it back and you'd be able to determine that ah, there was a load point back here. And that's what's really caused this, and this uh, caused the explosive moment with the stirrups, um, experiencing a, a sheer, a buckling moment, like a rippling effect, all the way down like a piano keys, and resolved itself only out to there, where it went that far, not any further. The loads aren't, aren't on this side at that point. This point load affected this girder and this capacity. Notice the flange up top. Flange got away with it. Flange pretty much is out here is a little broken, but out here it, it, it didn't experience the, the counter forces is what we're looking at. So the counter forces to that force coming there are all the way out to here, going backwards. Um, very, very interesting indeed, right? If that's so, could you put a support here and, 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 and decelerate some of that counter force right across here since you know that that's the load point? Could you then put some more... Uh, Reinforcement coming this direction to stop it from going into shear. Uh, to stop the tensile, tension from happening first. But what you don't see is that, I think the cracks are already developing here, as we can see here. It's uh, We're kind of late in the game on this one. I wish we, yeah, there's a crack there. Right about here. It's, it's already developing, but I wanted to see it develop. I want to see how it develops starting down here, and it's just no luck. No luck on that. Maybe they bounced this down and moved it around because it's way down here. I find that very amazing. It's this far down. So this is the 45. Those are the uh, the shear links that, that save the structure still. I don't know if the load's still on it at this point. Probably not because it would keep going down. But you're looking at an awesome crack analysis again you get to enjoy it and that's the that is wow that is beautiful so just follow it back you can clearly see all the way through here so this was 
this system is, is pretty pretty narrow. There's a hole apparently through the system. It's pretty narrow. It's not as thick as you would think. And and I don't know the thickness of this, but we can evaluate that. See how thin it is? This is the web, an I-beam I web type design. And this might be for lifting. And they didn't want to put it. No, that's probably for lifting there. I don't know. That hole there is interesting. The hole is interesting. All right, I want to terminate the video, just give you, you know, some more crack analysis stuff as you guys evaluate and look at bridges and things like that. Here's your stirrups, and you're going to look behind the stirrups, and it's going to tell you about the load, where the load was, how it was really taking place. Don't get confused by the magic on the surface or the bars too much. Now, if they're rusted, that's another story, but don't get confused by them too much. Take, take, take data on from behind the stirrups. Terminating video. Hope you guys are having a little fun and and uh, learning, advancing your crack analysis.